Thanks for joining us today on HXGN TV. I'm your host, Kyle Phelan. Today we're going to be discussing the Megarob project. We have Joel Martin, Laser Tracker Product Manager from Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, and Jose Antonio Dieste, Engineering Manager at the ATIP Technology Center. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Joel, I'm going to come to you first. What is Megarob? Megarob was the idea of creating a functional platform for the factory of the future, looking at the manufacturing challenges that uh, are ahead of us and how we're going to solve them as we move into the future. So it was really trying to build a, a flexible manufacturing cell for very large objects. The cell right now is 20 meters by six meters by five meters in size. The idea is to be able to mill big parts with the accuracies that we would traditionally see with a small milling machine, but over a very large volume. And to do it, we essentially used a, a, a common off-the-shelf robot hanging from an overhead gantry crane system being driven by a, a laser tracker to correct its uncertainties. Now with something this size, what does it take to make this dream a reality? Yeah, the, the core of this really came down to the laser tracker itself. Um, being able to use data from a tracker, drive uh, a robot end effector in, in real time. We actually have a video that we can show, uh, and I'll talk a little bit over it, where you see uh, a milling end effector as it's, uh, as it's going through a process. And the, the piece on top of the end effector is called a TMAC. It's a device that allows the tracker to measure its position in six degrees of freedom. On the screen now, you can see the laser tracker actually measuring the TMAC and where it is in space. We're using that data to feed back into the robot control loop and have the, the, the drive of the robot really be from the end effector of the robot so that everything behind the end effector, the robot, the crane, all of the substrate, nothing else matters. The only thing that is critical is the milling head and what the milling head is doing in the process. Okay, and Jose, I'm going to bring you in here. What was the main objective to developing the Mega Rob? Okay, so uh, the main objective uh, uh, is due to, to the problem that we detected in uh, our technological center. We are trading with uh, many customers, and there is a common problem for, for manufacturing large parts. Okay, So there is uh, still a lot of manually performed uh, manufacturing processes. Our customers uh, needed something automatic, automated, and with uh, accuracy enough to uh, fit their requirements. This is the main reason why we created Megarob. So we searched the, the best consortium in, in Europe in order to, to, to perform these objectives. We have a, we have a picture uh, as well, Kyle, of some of the companies that are involved in the project. It was a total of about seven different companies through four countries that were involved in the, the European development project to bring Megarob to life. And with all these companies that helped you out with, with the Megarob, what is the accuracy you achieve? Okay, we, we have to distinguish uh, two different uh, accuracy concepts, okay? Uh, one is static accuracy and dynamic one. Uh, static is when we are moving the robot to a fixed position and we stop the robot or we are uh, going in uh, very slow movements. So then we can achieve uh, accuracies better than five, uh, 50 microns. Okay, for example, when milling, we are uh, in dynam dynamic mode, we are moving uh, quite faster. So in this case, with the experiments we have done and with the demos we have performed for our customers, we can reduce the accuracy uh, uh, below 0.3 millimeters. Who can benefit from this? I think uh, a large potential customers can benefit for, for this technology because it's the first time that uh, a high accuracy position sensor, like, like a laser tracker, is not only used as a metrology device, because it's used uh, for uh, sensoring all the position of the machines. So, so we are tracking the tool, and we are tracking directly all the manufacturing process. So uh, any industry that uh, wants to increase their accuracy in their machines could be benefit from, from mega raw system. But we are focusing in uh, large parts, so uh, industries like uh, aerospace, uh, rail, uh, rail ship building, ship building, uh, construction can be benefit from from this new system. We have we have a video as well, Kyle. If you want to see on um, the the system actually cutting, you asked on accuracy and what kind of accuracies we are able to achieve. Right. We can show the video quickly. Uh, it shows the the system actually cutting a couple of demonstration shapes that we did in the project, 
And you can see the difference between the, the dynamic accuracy and the static accuracy, as, as Jose had commented on. Um, when when the, the mill cuts through, you'll see it come back and trace that same process. Uh, robots are traditionally very repeatable, but we're not using robot repeatability here. We're truly using the accuracy driven from the metrology system into the robot to recut these paths and show the accuracy that's achievable in the project. So what could be done in the future? Okay, we have a lot of concepts and ideas for the future. The first one is to uh, implement these kind of solutions for uh, more robots because we have started with Comau one but uh, you can see in the show that we are using also for Kika robots. More uh, robot brands are open for us in order to implement the system. Okay, also uh, we have started with uh, a rotating tool so we can perform milling, polishing, grinding, everything with a rotating tool and we, uh, it was uh, uh, quite difficult to start because we, we are trading with uh, cutting forces and so on. So now we want to extrapolate it to, to new manufacturing processes. For example, laser cutting, uh, water cutting, also welding. Uh, we can use also for uh, automatic assembly of, of parts in aeronautics. We can use for riveting, screwing, and more uh, manufacturing process. And also, we started with uh, with a crane because it's a common infrastructure that uh, can be found in all our customers in, in industrial workshop. The, the, there are plenty of, of cranes that we can implement this system in in, uh, in these cranes. Also, there are new possibilities for implement uh, the robotics controller in uh, mobile platforms in order to work from the floor also. Again, we have, a, we have a picture as well from a, a specific customer application. I think Jose can talk a little bit better about the, the application that we did as a part of the project and the prove out of the technology for the project as well. Sure. Yeah. This is uh, one of the first uh, demos we, we did. Uh, this is a composite beam uh, for making bridges. It's uh, from a Spanish company, a large company uh, called Acciona. It's a composite beam made in carbon fiber and glass fiber. They use uh, because it's very lightweight, so they can transport it uh, by helicopter to uh, uh, parts of the wall or zones that are very difficult logistics. So uh, they are using now for, even for uh, corrosion uh, in the CSI, for example. And that we did is uh, normally they produce it by uh, laminating manual process, but afterwards uh, we have to cut it into uh, into shape in order to fit in in, in position. Right. So uh, in, in the past they did it manually, so they have a lot of problems with re rejection, accuracy, and now we can do it with a high precision, high tolerance, we can make even more uh, different uh, shape cuts than they did uh, in the past. And so we have made uh, a lot of holes that are necessary to start screws and riveting for, for, for the assembly. Okay, so we can reach this uh, high accuracy, 50 mi uh, microns, and we can perform more than uh, 200 uh, holes in only two, two hours. So it's a, a large step for, for them. That's definitely a lot. And uh, regarding this, these cutting edge technologies like the Mega Rob, what comes next? Okay, so uh, we are going to start in, uh, in the coming months a new uh, research project. So we call Kraken. And uh, we want to hybrid uh, additive manufacturing process with uh, substrative ones. Additive manufacturing processes are very trendy, but they have some problems, okay, with the materials, with the accuracy, and with surface finishing. These problems can be solved if you uh, hybrid or, or support these processes with uh, substrative ones, that, like the ones that we have shown in, in Megaro, for example, milling or uh, grinding or polishing. So we want to make, uh, we want to make uh, one of the largest 3D printers in the world, but uh, with the performance improved. 
another exciting part of that project is it, it brings a very similar team together that did the original Megarob project, but it adds one more layer, um, and that is Vero, which is uh, our own Hexagon software company, okay. which is involved in the project as well, uh, doing some of the, the, the CAM work that will come into the project. So it's, a, it's an excellent additive and, and really shows the strength of Hexagon as a, as a total network. It's a, a quite a large challenge because now there are no uh, software for make a, a hybrid manufacturing, so they have to make a, a quite good development. Okay, well I'd like to thank our guests, Joel and Jose Antonio, for joining me here today. For more about Megarob, you can visit megarob.eu. And to tune into additional episodes of HXGN TV, log on to hxgntv.com. Thanks for watching.